Now, the plan today is to talk about the matrix version of the block equation and then the block equation solution. So, so you typically won't have, so why bother with this? Well, if you ever sort of look into any, you know, any MRI physics kind of things, th this is the way that uh, you would actually set things up in order to use MATLAB, for instance. Uh, now, typically, you, you wouldn't necessarily have to do all the setup. There's a lot of software out there. You would just sort of download some software that would have already done all the, you know, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's for, for setting up the matrix. But it's good to, to see uh, conceptually how you sort of you know, fit the block equation into, into a matrix uh, version of it, sort of a practical uh, working matrix uh, version of it. So, that, so that's, that's the plan. Uh, the plan today. So there's nothing really new. It's, it's just it's actually just sort of rewriting the block equation and the solution. The one thing is new is that we'll, we'll include the actual solution to the precession. So we, we talked about the you know m cross uh, b for the differential equation, but we didn't actually write out the solution that describes that circle. So we'll we'll write out the solution that describes the circle and how how that works. So th that part, that part, uh, I, I haven't gone over before. So, so where, so where are we starting? So, if we just start with the precession part, so uh, so just the precession part, we have, uh, you know, the the B going in this direction, and then the M going in that direction. And then the, the the dm dt how how the m changes over time. So this guy is dm dt vector. This guy is m vector. This guy is the b vector. So so and that was that was. Uh, how you get the dmdt vector was the way we originally wrote it out was dmdt just equals the m vector cross producted with that constant times the b vector so so that was our original piece of the we'll leave leave it cuz we'll add add to it later so that was the original piece and then there was there was other parts. So so how do we write this differential equation out as a uh, as a matrix? That's that's the plan. So um, so the way we do that. So here's the here's the differential equation written out as a matrix. And so, so here's the dm dt vector. But if we want to sort of do something with it, we have to break that. That's a three-dimensional vector, so we have to break that into into its components. And so, uh, its components will be, uh, you know, dm x dt, you know, d dm y dt, and dm z. Dt. So those are the those are the, you're taking that little vector there and uh, uh, and finding its x y z coordinates of the tip. So that thing, so that thing is a vector, column a column vector. And then now we got to do the cross product. And so uh, the way we do the cross product, we have that funny looking. Matrix. Where should we put that uh, that matrix? So I put it over in the upper upper right hand corner here. So so we had that funny matrix, which was you know a crossed b. We could write it out as 
this uh, funny matrix with uh, zeros down the diagonal. And then um, I need one that's big enough that I can see it. So B, Z. So this is just a representation of that one vector as a matrix, which mathematicians sometimes do. You can represent complex numbers as a little two by two matrix. So it's a little little redundant because you got B Z in there twice, uh, and then there's B Y and minus B Y, and then uh, B X and minus B X, and so if we multiply that by the A vector, not uh, with with no redundancy. Okay, so that's just one way of writing out the cross, what, you, what, what coordinates you need to multiply to do the cross product. So if you look at that, and we'll consider a B vector that doesn't have any X and Y components. So it's just strictly in the Z direction. So if it's just strictly in the Z direction, uh, so what are the x and y components? Th those would be some additional magnetization coming from the, the RF coil. So if the RF coil was turned on, there'd be some additional magnetization in the xy plane. But if we just assume that we, you've just gone into the magnet and you haven't done, or, or somebody did some RF but it's turned off now, then the B, uh, the B field is strictly in the in the z direction. And so if it's strictly in the z direction, then we only need to worry about these two guys because that's where the Z, the BZ component is. So, so that explains, like, if you look at any sort of matrix representation of the block equation, it's, it, it's a funny matrix that just has, like, has just, uh, just two entries in it. And so, so what, it, what it looks like, the way to write out the precession part of the differential equation for the block equation, that's what we're doing. Um, you have zero and then uh, uh, just, you know, minus gamma times B zero, and then everything else is zero. Okay, so and so the reason for that is because we're assuming that uh, the 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 B the B field should I have done A versus B because I got B there. Uh, <coughs> yeah, ah, I just realized that. <laughs> uh, so I, I I wrote out uh, I wrote out A cross B as this sort of beam matrix versus versus a but i'm using the uh the matrix here to represent the b vector which is the second vector uh which is the second vector okay i'm okay <laughs> all good <laughs> okay so that um so so this when you look at a matrix operating on a vector this is what i'll talk about in the main thing uh what is you know what does it mean when you see matrix vector? So what that what that the way you should geometrically think of that is you should think of you should think of that as uh, matrix rotates and possibly scale possibly rotates possibly scales or some combination of rotation and scale to give another vector. So this says vector equals matrix doing rotation and scaling to another vector. So after you do this multiplication, you just end up with a with a vector again, not a matrix. So if you look in the, you know, if you look in a paper, a lot of times it's kind of confusing, but they'll they'll replace this with with the precession frequency. And you know why is that? Well, we know that you know our original equation is the precession frequency equals uh, just equals the the value of the B field. Value, you know, the, there's the strength of the B field, the B zero field. 
So sometimes you'll see that omega in there, and you go like, what's that doing in there? <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be a component of the B vector. Uh, and it is a component of the B vector, but it just happens, it happens to be uh, equivalent to, uh, to the precession frequency. So sometimes you just see frequencies in the matrix uh, instead of the actual sort of B component. And that's, that's, why it's, that's why you got a frequency in there. So they'll write this matrix out but have an omega in it instead. Okay, so so that's the um, so that's basically a differential equation for uh, it's just it's just another way of writing this out, but where you can see the individual components, and so you know see what you actually need to multiply. So that one that one was the differential equation, and so what does the solution to that look like? So this was uh, differential equation. So now we want to do the, the solution to it, just the precession part of the solution. And so the precession part of the solution now is going to be, so this is solution to just precession. So now we're going to have um, a... a vector of magnetization across time. So now we solved it in such a way that we can, uh, we can essentially get the coordinates of the, of the um, m vector, not the dmd, not, not, the, D, not, not, you know, not the derivative vector, but get, get the coordinates of the m vector at a particular point in time so that we could plot out like what it's actually doing over time. And so, so that vector solved over time is another vector that we can write out. So this is like the, the x component at a particular point in time, and the, and the y component at a particular point in time, and the z component at a particular point in time. So that's a, that's a column column vector or matrix with just one one column and and then it's uh, we, ha we have the solution the solution matrix which is going to be another matrix times a vector and so that one is cosine cosine of you know omega zero T we'll unpack unpack that a little later and the sine of omega zero t, then a zero, and then a minus sine of omega zero t, and cosine, not, not minus cosine of omega zero t, and then a zero, zero, and a one. Okay, and then and then that one is multiplied by a vector, and what this vector is, it's the initial condition vector. And so the initial condition vector is the, the x component of whatever the magnetization was after we turned the RF pulse off, and the y component uh, of the magnetization vector when we turn the, right after, just after we turn the RF off, and the z component. Okay, so now let's sort of see what's going on. So, so what's going on here? So this, so this, so this guy is you know radians per second. That's an angular velocity. And you know what, what what's a radian? You know, a radian is you have a circle of you know radius one, and a radian is a length one along the circle, whatever that angle is, fifty-seven blah, blah, blah degrees. So that's, and we could do it in cycles per second, then we have to have the two pi in there, but w if we just do it in radians per second, we just have the, the omega in there. And so one of the things, whenever you see <coughs> like a couple of things multiplied, you can get confused. One way to sort of uh, restore sanity is just look at the units. 
And so what is, you know, what is, the, what is the units here? The units is, you know, angle per second, angle divided by second. And then we're multiplying by seconds. And so we just end up with an angle. And then we take a cosine of it. And so what that does is that will basically uh, allow us to, you know, for any point in time, uh, you know, get a cosine of whatever the angle is at a particular point in time. So that's why you always see those. Uh, those omega t's there. Okay, so so when we yeah so so radians radians per second times you know times seconds you know equals radians. So that's that's the argument of the cosine. Okay, so when you see a matrix like this immediately you realize this is a rotation matrix. So, so, the mat so a matrix can, you know, it, it can either do nothing, that would be like an identity matrix, would just sort of, you know, multiply an identity matrix time the vector would stay the same, or it, could, or it could rotate the vector, or it could stretch or shrink the vector, or some combination of rotation and stretching and shrinking. But this is a special, special matrix that only rotates, doesn't stretch or shrink. So it keeps the vector the same length and it just rotates it. And it rotates it around the z-axis, or equivalently, it, it rotates it in the xy plane. So we could also, you'll also see if you, you, know, if you look, look in the literature, this will often be written out uh, as, so, so the m vector you know, equals a rotation matrix. This, is, this guy is a z rotation matrix, rotates around the z axis in the xy plane. So that guy's, we'll put a, a square over that one because it means it's a matrix. Uh, and the argument here will, will be that Omega, uh, omega zero, sort of that's the resonant frequency uh, at, at, at whatever the B, v, B field is uh, times whatever the current time point is. And, so, and then that's multiplied by this, uh, this other vector, and this other vector is our initial condition. So this guy is... Uh, initial condition. So that's similar to that, to the, what we did with the, the T2 solution. It, it wasn't in the, the initial condition wasn't in the, the differential equation, but when we solve the differential equation, um, it, it, it somehow got added, and it's just sort of like wherever we're starting. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the, uh, Differential equation for the precession part of the block equation and the solution to it, uh, written out as a matrix. And so this one would allow you basically to, it, and so how, how does this actually work? Let's just sort of uh, draw it down here. So, so the way it works is, so here's, here's the z-axis in that direction. There's the uh, oh, x and the y axis. X axis, y axis. So how this works is you start off with the initial condition vector. So let's say the initial condition vector was, you know, right here. So that guy, that guy's initial condition vector, like what, whatever the, magnet, the, the state of the local magnetization was immediately after you turned off the RF. And uh, then we operate on that initial condition vector with this matrix. And this matrix is different for every point in time. There'll be a different, different angle here uh, for the sines and cosines, depending on what, what the time point is. And that could be, 
you know, a microsecond, or it could be like 20 seconds, doesn't matter. But we'll stick in some time there, multiply that matrix, and then what will it do? It's a rotation matrix, so it just rotates this vector, it doesn't stretch it or shrink it. And so it will rotate it to some, to some position, some position, say like over here. So, so that's, so this is what, you know, you know, what, you know, R did. So what, what that R matrix did. So it rotated the initial condition vector over to the current state. So this, this guy is the current, current state. So this one is the, is the, just the M vector at a point in time. So, so that's the way this, this matrix works. So basically, the M, th this guy's a constant. Initial condition's a constant. And, and so for each point in time, you fiddle with this matrix by inserting you know, the current point in time. And what that does is that slowly rotates the matrix around. And if you just operate this equation, you'll see that it will just make a circle. It will make a circle from the tip of the vector. So this is exactly the same, again, this is exactly the same equation you would have for a top. Uh, so, so that's that's the solution solution to the the first part of the of the of the block equation. And one thing that I didn't uh, I'll talk about it in the main lecture when we actually look at how we can you know separate out these different components of the of the block equation. How come they separate out? And in order for them to separate out, they all have to be at right angles to each other. And so it turns out this this component of the of the update, the precession component of the update is is perpendicular to the T two decay part of the update, and both of those are also perpendicular to the T one regrowth part. So they're all completely separate. Yeah. 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 But what? How does it just go to complete zero? Yeah, there be a uh, it's just because it, yeah, it's just because this, all these other guys are just uh, are just zero. So like you know, like the 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 x component of the b zero field is zero, and the and the the y component of the b zero field is zero. So so that just gets that. So Yeah. Oh, here? Yeah, no, no, that guy is just a zero in, in the way I've written it out here. So when you, the multiplications that we need to do for the dot, this was just a way of, a kind of a twisted way of writing out the multiplications we need to do to do the cross product. And so, those will have zeros down the diagonal. So there would be z zeros down the diagonal, and then you would have the, you know, the, the, the y's would be here, and the x's would be here, but the y's and the x's are both zero. Yeah. Yeah, so again, we, <coughs> we didn't do anything new, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> it was just, it's just supposed to be, just supposed to be re rewriting this thing in terms of actual, the actual components. A little more economically, because we're you're sort of implying like what you're multiplying. So this implies that you multiply, you know, zero times m x and and this, you know, gamma v zero times m y. So if I wrote the whole thing out with just multiplications, that would be even more tedious. But this is kind of like the reasonably compact way of writing it out. And eventually, you sort of so what what happens, you know, kicking and screaming for me uh, in math is you always try to sort of reduce the number of symbols that you're looking at. <laughs> at some point, you have to sort of like have a lot of symbols to sort of figure out like what a cross product is. But once you've sort of gotten the idea of how cross products work, 
then what you can do is you can just say, oh, it's just a crash product. <laughs> and then I've only got one symbol. <laughs> and so I can sort of like start to operate at that higher level of just using those smaller number of symbols. And so that's, we'll see that you know, throughout the quarter. We're constantly, we start off with like a gazillion numbers and then we compress it down to just one or two letters and then start thinking at the level of just one or two letters. It's important to sort of be able to unpack them so you have some idea of what, what it stands for, but eventually you stop worrying about the, the, the fine details of what's inside there and you just look at the, you look at the letters sort of more, more at the macro level. Okay, so now um, let's do the the full block equation solution. So this is what you would need to do to include all the ex, uh, all the T1 decay, T1 regrowth, uh, T2 decay plus uh, plus precession, so that you actually describe the whole signal over time. So um, let's put a divider here, and so this is the same thing uh, we did last time, except. Uh, now we've got to write out the whole differential equation. And so the whole differential equation, we will add, add it up here. So, so, so then we have the, the T2 decay in there. So that was the, the X component of the M vector times the unit vector in the in the x direction, that's what the i is, plus the y component of the m vector times the unit vector in the, in the y direction uh, divided by t2. And, and then also subtracted off the mz0, which was the equilibrium magnetization number, minus the z component uh, multiplied by the unit vector in the z, z direction. Sorry, that goes outside the parentheses. There we go. So there's the z, z component, uh, the, the, the unit vector in the z direction divided by t1. So that was our that was our full, full block equation. And so how do we write that out uh, in, in the matrices? So, so here's the DMDT. And I won't, I won't write out, I won't divide it into its components, but it will be divided into XYZ components. And, uh, and now we've got some additional terms in here. So we have minus 1 over T2 in the, along the diagonal. And when you see things along the diagonal in a, in a matrix that's operating on a vector, those are things that scale the vector. So uh, typically scale the vector, um, especially if there's no rotation component of the, of the matrix. So if you just wanted to scale a, a vector, you would just put something down the diagonal and, uh, and put ones in, in the other places, and then you would uh, you'd be able to uh, just scale a vector. So here's the, so we have that minus one over T2 in the, in the X and the Y positions. Uh, and then we have minus 1 over T1 down here. So that's a w supposed to be a 1, okay, along the diagonal. Uh, and then we still have the, um, this thing, which is sometimes written as a frequency. So that's the same as we had before. And then uh, zeros in, in the other parts. And then that matrix, which includes both the, uh, the rotation part uh, as well as the, the decay part, 
uh, of the Bloch equation is is operating on uh, the the m vector here, or you know there's the x and the y and the z components of the m vector, phi and z. Um, but we have to deal with this term. So this one's a little more complicated. So we have another another vector added on. And that um, that vector added on is mz0 uh, over t1. Because you can see that the you can see that this this term for the t1 regrowth is is different because it's got an extra it's got an extra number in it. So that's how you write out write out this equation in terms of coordinates, basically. Uh, and so it's the same kind of equation. So you've got a vector here equals a matrix operating on a vector which rotates and scales it. it now it's doing some scaling to it now too. And then we added on another vector here. Okay, so it's a little, it doesn't look exactly like the, the one up there, but it, it does exactly the same thing as the differential equation. And so now we've got to solve this guy. And so when we, uh, solution to, you know, precess plus T2, T1. So this is pretty much everything. So this thing, uh, you know, includes everything. So this guy is, is the equivalent to this m. So it's the m vector, now including all the, the expansion and contraction. So what does that solution look like? So it's, it's a little bit more of a mess. So it starts off with uh, the e's, because remember, we e uh, to the you know, minus t over t2 down the diagonal. So what these guys are doing, so this is a matrix that <coughs> is actually, it's not doing any rotation. <coughs> it's only, sorry, I, I should have put zeros along the, the I, I said last time I said, if you just want to, if you just want to scale a vector, multiply by something with numbers, down the, the diagonal, but th there should be zeros in the other part of the matrix, not ones. Uh, so otherwise you would get a rotation. Sorry about that. So um, so here's the matrix with uh, zeros here. So it's only got, it's only got, um, stuff along the diagonal. And so if you have a matrix with stuff along the diagonal, zeros elsewhere, <coughs> that will just do x, y, and z scaling of, of the vector. And so, <coughs> so what's that doing? That's, that's sort of uh, implementing the t2 shrinkage and the t1 regrowth part of the vector, but not, not rotating it. So it's, it's it completely separated out the precession part. So, so that thing is then multiplied by the precession part. And so, so what is the precession part? It's the same, same thing we had before. So it was just, you know, cosine of omega zero t uh, sine of you know, omega zero t, and then a zero, and then minus sine. So this is just the thing that <coughs> does the the rotation of the uh, the precession rotation of the vector. There's a one there, and then a zero here, and a zero here. So that's the <coughs> z-axis rotation, xy plane rotation matrix, and it's being multiplied like before by the um, the initial condition. So here's that initial condition vector, like wh where, uh, th that's this guy right here. Wh wh where did we start? Uh, you know, where did we start our magnetization? That, that's the part 
that's an initial condition that's added to the solution to the differential equation. It wasn't in here. Uh, and it allows us to sort of calculate for any given starting point what we're going to get. So it's important to sort of keep in mind what's going on. So what happens here is when we multiply this, this uh, matrix, so this guy, you know, this guy is a, is a matrix rotating and scaling, in this case just rotating a vector, and what do we get out of that? Uh, we get out of that a, a, a vector. And then we take that vector, and then we operate on it with another matrix, and this guy's only doing the scaling. So here's a matrix. So now we have uh, this guy, which is you know, a matrix you know, times a vector. And that gives us another vector, because this guy is a vector. That gives us our output output vector. There's one more part of it, and that is um, uh, plus this vec uh, another vector here, and this guy is 0, 0, and it's got the mz component of the initial condition, which has already, already appeared here, and um, Uh, times a decay term. So this is this is all jammed in to that one number, one minus e to the minus t over t one. So I didn't say how we how we how we actually got this. So that this guy is just one one vector. So this is this is the bottom line. This is what you need to be able to um, do the whole the whole block equation solution. So if you have this this thing programmed into MATLAB, then you can you can basically sort of actually you can actually simulate how the magnetization is going to change for a given you know for a given t1 uh, and a given t2. So you, you, th those are depend on what you know what kind of tissue you are trying to simulate, or maybe you want to do two block equations. So we'll simulate the block equation for a tissue that has a particular t1 and t2 and then a second tissue that has a different T1 and T2. So, so this solution here will do our whole block equation solution. So like, remember, like if, if you're starting off, if, if here's your initial condition of your M vector, then if you run this thing over time, that will do your whole sort of block equation that, that does the whole sort of simulation all the way back up to uh, the original, you know, mz zero here. So it will it will simulate that vector as it goes all the way back up, including all the the shrinkage and the regrowth, the regrowth of the z and the shrinkage of the of the x y. Okay. So any questions about this this part? So it's just. It's pretty much the same as what we did before. We just did it very slowly. Uh, and this is how you would actually, if you're messing around in MATLAB, how you would actually operate on all these numbers. So I mean, so like once you've defined in MATLAB these things, then you would just end up with, you know, a single symbol in MATLAB R. And so this, this thing is an R. And then this thing would be another single symbol in MATLAB. So you would just do, you know, R with nothing in between this symbol, and then from that you would know, oh, we're actually sort of, you know, doing this matrix multiply. All, all in the, all, all with the goal of reducing the total number of symbols. <laughs> like, like when I was younger, I was always getting angry. It's just like, wow, if there's, if there's only one symbol there. What does it actually mean? <laughs> So it's important to know what it actually means, but then it's also important to eventually get up to the point where you're just operating with, a sp with just one or two letters because the mind can't, there's no way that you can keep all these in mind. It took me like, you know, 45 minutes to write them all out here. And so you always want to get down to like two or three. <laughs> okay. So we haven't talked about the, the RF. So... So how can you actually um, how can you actually 
insert the B1 field in there because remember this guy, this guy up here, you know, in, it includes, you know, the B0 field, which is from the superconducting magnets, and it includes the gradients. And the gradients only just affect the Z component, so they're kind of like the B0. But it also includes the B1 field. And the B1 field is the X, you know, the XY part. So, so both of these are, are Z. They, they, they can be thought of as just affecting the Z, but uh, that B also contains uh, the XY part. And so in real life, what's happening is you have the B there, but when you turn on the, the RF coil, it adds on to the magnetic field the Z component. It adds an XY component that's very rapidly rotating around, so it causes, the, it causes that B vector to rapidly wiggle around. And so how could we add that in there? <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'll, I won't write out the solution. It's, I, I've got it, I have some of the solutions written out uh, in the notes, but let's just write out, let's just write out the differential equation. So I'll do the same thing as this guy, except include, so basically this is, differential equation including RF stim, uh, you know, not solution, not solution. And so you can see we've still got some blanks in that, in that guy, so we just sort of add, add a couple more in there. So, so we could also add the gradients in there so, you know, where would the gradients be? Well, the, the gradients would just be added on to these uh, Z component terms. Because remember, the, you can sort of think of the gradients as basically just affecting, uh, just affecting, they actually affect the X and Y a little bit, but we can, just, we can ignore that. And so we can, uh, so, it, so how do you add the gradients into the, the block equation? You would just, add something onto these, these two terms in this matrix. But we'll just leave those, uh, the gradients out for now and just talk about how do we add the RF excitation, which is the XY business. And so how we add that is, we still got a zero there, that's this guy. And we still have, you know, our omega zero here, you know, which is, you know, equals that uh, the Z component of the, of the B0 field, which is, you know, the only one that we're worried about. And so then uh, what you end up with is over here, we end up with the frequency of the RF stimulation at a particular point in time. So that could be changing because you might be ramping the RF frequency and it might not necessarily be the same as the frequency, the resonant frequency. It's very common that you'll be using a different frequency slightly off resonance that, that could easily be occurring. So, so, this, so this frequency is it's going to be close to this one but it won't be the same, same frequency. And you know it's a frequency, but we know that, you know, when you multiply it by gamma, it's actually the Z component of the B field. <laughs> so, but if you look, like I said, if you look in the literature, you'll see these frequencies in the matrix, but they're, they're basically Z components of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the B field, the total B field. So this one has, uh, Omega zero t. So it's got, it has a, a, another frequency in there. Uh, that's our, and that's um, our frequency of the B one field, which may or may not be the same as the as the resonant frequency 
at whatever current B0 we are at. And so then we have negative omega 0. That's the same as this guy. And, uh, and then we've got uh, the x. And so the B1 field has an x and a y component. So we're going to have two numbers here. So, so this is, uh, we've got a, a cosine there, and then we've got sort of the negative one down here at a particular point in time, times the sine, and then this guy is... Uh, it, it, it's, it's two negatives because of uh, that control, like what direction the B1 field is rotating. And if we're rotating in a clockwise direction, we'll have two negatives instead of last time we had like, you know, the sine, just the sine was, was negative and the cosine wasn't changed. We've got them both negative here. And because of the direction we're rotating, times the cosine of omega t, and then a zero. Okay, so that's just nine numbers again. There's the slightly twisted column. Uh, and then that's just multiplied by uh, our uh, make sure I get the right thing. It's multiplied by yeah, our mx, my mz. Yeah, so this is still the differential equation. So, so basically this is how, so this is how we would tack in. So basically we've added, added four terms in there for, for two additional directions for the x and, the x and y direction of the magnetic field. And then if we added some gradients in, we could sort of tack in some additional gradients into the z component here. And so, so this was just a way of sort of building everything in there. So, so you can see again, like the block equation contains, it contains everything. It contains, you know, the, the, the B0 field, the gradients, wh whether or not you've got the RF on, uh, how the precession is, is doing, and how the vectors are changing length from these various decays. And you would have to then solve this. You would get something that looks more like something uh, over here. But it would just be a, set, a, a number of matrices with, with entries, some of which are time dependent, that would allow you to simulate, uh, simulate the, uh, the magnetization over time. And like I said, there's, you can download MATLAB simulators block equation simulators that will, uh, that will do this for you. But this is what's actually inside of them. Okay, so enough block equation for now. <laughs> any, any questions out there? Seem okay? It's sort of, I think that it's, it's worthwhile for me to sort of slowly, very slowly go through it just to see the relationship between like this equation, you know, how you do the cross product, how you actually get that into a matrix and sort of write it out as a, uh, as a matrix for sort of more easy manipulation. Okay, no additional questions? All, all good, time for a break, bathroom break. Okay, see you, uh, see you in a bit. <laughs>